So yeah, sorry about yesterday, man. That was a dick move on my part. No, it, it's really cool. Like I said, it's, um, you know, man, you know, when you, when you have stuff to do, like, I feel bad, you know, like we, we've been doing this podcast for a while and it wasn't until like this year that I decided, like, I wanted to kind of branch out a little bit more. Like we, we talk movies, music, and pop culture with like guests, but it's always like our friends and like, you know, we're, we're based out of New York. So like we have friends in like bands, like, you know, a de- like suffocation or like uh taking back Sunday, stuff like that. Like the dudes yeah, from, yeah. from out here. And this year I was like, you know, I'm like, I really want to talk to people who make movies or like records that, that meant something to me. So on occasion I'll hit someone up and like, you were like, yeah, let's do it. And uh, the limousines are a really important band in my life, man. Like really like I'll, I'll get into like why and how, um, but how, how have you been? How is California? Uh, California is overpriced. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great, man. Um, it's, I would never leave. To, oh, I, I've gotten to go to a lot of places that I never thought I'd be able to. Okay. Um, kind of came from nothing. So the idea of traveling is not something that like my family, you know, raised me with. It wasn't an aspiration. So the fact that I got to go to every, every state in this country, I got to go to a bunch of European countries all because of music. Yeah. Uh, is a blessing, man. It's, it's, it's cool. I'm not sure how much of that's going to happen anymore. Um, traveling wise. And I'm okay with like the idea of that kind of being in the, in the past, but I'm really, I feel really fortunate that I got to do all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's something, you know, like, uh, just with both bands with strata and as well as the limousines, like, uh, you know, you, you've been doing it for so long and, uh, you know, just, I guess sometimes I and mean, we're the same age, actually. I just looked. Oh, no, <laughs> and, shit. Nice. And, yeah, pretty much. Um, but yeah, you, you get to travel all around. And uh, but you seem to have a family now. And, and I guess things are a little bit different. So how does somebody like you who is uber creative? I mean, like you're an artist, like you, you put out some poetry books, I remember. Um, mm-hmm. And you were in two bands. Like, how, how do you feed that that part of you still from home? Well, I've, ha- I've had arguments about this with friends who there, there's a theory. I, I don't know who it's attributed to, but there's this um, an artist who said, you know, a real artist goes to the studio every day and makes art. And I don't know if he said uh, what he said for the opposite of that. I'm not a fake artist, but, you know, the rest of us um, wait for inspiration and then go act on it. And. I like to think of myself as a hardworking person, but by that metric, I am absolutely not. Um, at any time I've ever made anything, whether it's like visual art or music or writing a book or anything like that, it's always just straight, like a reaction to um, inspiration. So unfortunately that's my weakness. Uh, when you said I'm a creative person, it almost took me like it shocked me to hear that because I haven't thought of myself as one for a little while. Um, my creative output's gone down quite a bit since I've like found happiness in my life. Uh, so I, I feel like your question was, how do I feed all that? And I, I don't, it's, it's, if it comes to me, it comes to me. And if not, I try to find other things to, to, you know, be interested in. Okay. Um, you know, I, I I almost lost interest in music for a long time, to be honest. And, and it wasn't because of, uh, it wasn't because there's not any good music out there. There's plenty of great music. I, I just think that politically and uh, globally, just so many things were happening that it was almost like, okay, well, this song doesn't matter. This new story does. And this like, you know, this crazy shit that's happening matters. So that's what I was paying attention to for a long time. So I haven't felt very creative lately. But, you know, you, you take that and um, I mean, I, I, I compared like the limousines to like Portishead, like you guys made two records that oh, were wow. like, you guys are like life changing. And then years later, you know, you, you, you put out a single, uh, but then it wasn't until like 2019. I, I think Parachute to me was like such a vintage limousine song. But I mean, when what I love about it is like you're lyrically, you remind me of like a Morrissey because when you really break down what you're saying, it's, it's kind of like, um, 
dark in a way, but it's said in such a bright way that you don't think of it. So when you hear a new song like Parachute, you're like dancing around to it. You're like, man, this is so it made like my favorite song of 2020 uh, oh, wow. or 2019, actually. <laughs> um, so but so you can still get that out. And the same thing with Strata. So like, you know, the rock band that you do, um, you guys have been re releasing singles as well. So I guess you're kind of working in, in, in the way of like a stay at home dad. Um, yeah. and occasionally you, you make music and you release it. So it, you're, you know, you're back to like where I'm at, like, you know, like we, 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 we do our thing and, and, uh, like my band, we, we just, you know, every now and then we'll throw out five songs and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I like the, I like being an artist without, without obligations, I guess. And maybe that makes me super lazy or I'm sure it's, I know it's really frustrating for the people that are in the bands that I'm in, you know, like the, yeah. the bands I share with people because sometimes I'm into it. And sometimes I just like, it doesn't exist to me because I've been doing it for 25 years. And sometimes I just feel beaten up by it and I feel let down by it. And other times it's like a magical thing. I can't wait to do again. I'm very black and white, like a very extreme yeah. person. Um, but I had the conversations with my, with my bandmates. Like I've talked to Gio a lot about this and he understands and I've talked to the rest of the strata guys about it. That like, if I feel like, if I feel like doing this and I want to do it for fun, maybe not even ever stepping on stage again, if it's just like an occasional put out a song here and there, like kind of feel like I earned the right to just do that. I don't, I don't feel like I have to try to be a, a, a professional musician for my whole life. I don't want to be one of those yeah burned out you know I, i'm 43 which trips me out to even say <laughs> me too so that that means like if, if you know math actual math says that in seven years i'll be 50 yeah and that makes no fucking sense to me but that means that i don't want to be like posting on facebook like hey man come to my 50th birthday party show and like no one shows up and i'm just I, you know like yeah yeah there's, yeah, more, yeah. To life. there's more to life than than shameless self-promotion i guess now now do you think like for someone like me like i've been playing in bands for a long time as well um but i never had any type of like you know success that you had whichever way you look at success do you feel like if if maybe you didn't get to play certain places or you were like almost like a local musician do you feel like it, it's something that wouldn't have affected you as much like if i quit before anything ever happened with music yeah yeah, like, 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 would would that still, uh, you know? Because to me, like, I never, I never got anywhere except locally. People know us, and like, so, like, I could release five songs. You know, it wasn't like I was playing these like big places, and then you're just kind of like, okay. And also the the business of it, like you said, just sour. I hate. You. I fucking. I hate it. I hate the yeah. business of. It. If anything, like, uh, when I quit Strata in two thousand eight, January of two thousand eight. It was because I had turned 30. I told myself at 29, if I still felt this way about the half of my life, I love that band. I love those dudes. And I loved what we were doing, but I hated being in the music business. And I told myself, if I'm still this unhappy on my birthday, when I turned 30, it fucking out. And, and that's what I did. I, I quit on my birthday when I turned 30. So in a way, I've been kind of trying to leave the music business for 13 years. And it's not like, oh, I'm so successful. I keep getting pulled back into it. But the limousines was a total fluke. When we, when we made that music together, it was under the, uh, it, was, it was with the intention of there not being any intention. It was like, I don't even know this guy. He's going to send me some music. I love his, I love his instrumentals that he's done, his remixes. I want to sing on this shit because I was tired of guitar music. I didn't want to do rock anymore. And my idea was, I'm going to get a job. I'm just going to be a guy that stays at home. And I'm going to make music on the computer with this dude from Oakland. You know, I'd never even met him at the time. And we got lucky enough to where like this, one of the first songs we worked on got picked up on radio stations and it got on Alt Nation on satellite radio. And so all over the country, we had instantly like more fans than my band had from the last 10 years of work. And so I was like, okay, maybe it's, maybe it would be silly of me to turn my back on this. So we decided to like become an actual band and like, you know, have fun with it. We got on this like rocket ship and it was, it was amazing. And I'm glad we did that. And I think that if I had a, if I had a plan B, 
but like <laughs> if I had a plan B growing up in music, I probably would have taken that plan B like after the third show. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, cause I, I, I've never been one for, I don't like being looked at. I don't like the attention and being, I don't know how I ended up being a singer because I'm the same way it's fucked up, man. You're on stage and like, you're, you're, I'm on stage with always more talented people than myself. I'm always the least talented person on the stage. Same. And when I'm running around and I'm looking at all the eyes in the room staring at me, I want to be like, stop looking at me. Look at these guys. They're amazing. Yeah. It's just human nature. People are attracted to, you know, the voice and the, and the words and they want to pay more attention to that. But that's, that is so relatable because for someone like, like, I don't even like having a birthday party because I don't like being the center of attention. Yeah. I love having a birthday. I love that. Oh, right. I love being the center of attention with my family and my friends. Okay. I think I, it's, I think it's the strangers that I, I don't like being judged. I remember, I remember one of our first tours, I, I made the mistake of like reading the comments on some article that somebody wrote about us. And there was a picture of me where I look awful all fucking veiny and fat and like just hated it and someone commented under there it's like that band was pretty cool uh that singer was chunky like chino from deftones and for some reason that wasn't even that mean but just like saying that I, it bothered me so much and then i have this collection of things people have said about me that bothered me enough to where like that's a reason not to get on stage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And back then, like you didn't know, it, it was almost like when you're a kid and you stare at the sun when you're not supposed to, you didn't know back yeah. then that you're, it's like never read the comments on anything because oh, yeah. you could put up a video of a little girl with a puppy <laughs> eat, eating ice cream and somebody will be like, oh, you someone's going to call you a Nazi or yeah. Uh, yeah. Some, yeah. 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 Uh, when the, when the second Strata record came out, when I first like discovered that I had a falsetto I could use, the very first comment I saw online about it, I forget if it was YouTube or a, an article on like some metal site, you know, where people are, are commenting. And it said, why does Eric sound like a faggot now? <laughs> and that stuck in my head of like, I don't mind being called that. I've been called that my whole life. I don't care. But it's the fact that it's a stranger yeah. saying that about my, yeah. my voice. It just... Yeah, that's something I'm never going to miss. Like if I never get on stage again or if I never release music again, I'm not going to miss the the judgment. You know, yeah. the fact that and and there's the strata line where um that I said everyone's too scared to walk in your shoes but can work up the nerve to be critics. It's in a song called Stay Young. And that's that's my view on it still. It's like everyone has an opinion but no one knows what it's like to stand on a stage and be judged. You know yeah. what I mean? It's it's a, it's a weird thing. And now, like, it's so easy to, like, just get your, like, just anything. Even if you, even if Eddie Murphy puts out a Coming to America 2, it's like people who wouldn't have dropped a, a dollar to see it in the theaters are like, well, I didn't like it. It's like, well, you wouldn't even have gone to see it. It's like, let yeah. the fans, like, to me, I'm always looking at the best part. Like, I'm looking at, like, I'm going to look at a movie or a song and be like, oh, that chorus was cool. Like, to me, because I know, like, we make, like you and I, like we make music, we, we, we make art, whatever it's, we know that what it's like to be bashed. So I would never just like, I don't know, the older I got, I'm just, I appreciate more things. It's like, it's. Yeah. I can't, I can't talk shit about somebody unless they're a politician. I can't say something negative about a public figure. Just can't. Cause you know, like I remember a, a long time ago, putting out, you know, sending all the songs to the record label and they're trying to, we we let them pick which songs go on the record and i remember saying no I, I don't want that song on the album i fucking hate it and they're like well why'd you write it and i'm like i don't know like you just write songs and sometimes you end up hating the ones that you wrote yeah yeah, but yeah. the fact is like it's my record and i don't like that song and then they still put it on there that's, that is that's kind of i hate i hate the industry for stuff like that for stuff like that absolutely um so i remember like i'm, I'm gonna I'm going to talk to you about um, just hearing the first time I heard um, uh, Internet Killed a Video Star. Um, mm -hmm. It was on Alt Nation. And that was the first time I ever heard the band. And, you know, like I'm a Stern fan, so that's why I got serious. And, and very rarely would I listen to the music because I would listen to, you know, my iPod. But occasionally I would, you know, switch over to Alt Nation. And I heard that song and I was like, OK, I'm like, this is interesting because it. it it took the old song, which was, you know, uh, uh, video killed the radio star. And then from there, 
It's such a catchy song, but when you break down the lyrics, what I love about you and the songs are it's your lyricism like it's beyond like a catchy thing like you hear Depeche Mode and you hear just can't get enough it's like oh that's cool but maybe there's not really much to it this this song really caught me like lyrically and just just amazing so like how the hell did you guys end up like getting on that station or like it was just like you said like a fluke it really was um we had when we first started we would we would he'd send me instrumentals. I would sing in garage band and send it back to him. But instead of just emailing it back to him, I would just post it to MySpace. And so the first time Gio would hear what I sang on a song would be the same time. Whoever was following us on MySpace did. Wow. This is like 2000, I don't know, eight, nine, whatever. And so if you were following us back then, all the songs were always downloadable for free. So if you were one of the few like limousines fans in the early days, you would be able to just collect the songs as they're being worked on. So you might end up with like five versions of the song, you know, like here it is with just the first verse and chorus. And then like it goes instrumental for a while. And then here it is without a bridge. Here it is with the bridge. <clears throat> so what had happened was uh, very busy people was on MySpace. It was the first version of it. It didn't have a bridge. It didn't have that second chorus out. It didn't have any of that stuff. It was like half the song. And all of a sudden, uh, a guy that I know, um, Aaron Axelson, who is the was basically the heart and soul of this radio station in San Francisco. He said, "Hey, man, I need I need your next song because Alt Nation is playing it." And I said, "We haven't we haven't put a song out." And he said, "It's very busy people, right?" And I said, "No, that's bullshit." And so we had to get in touch with Alt Nation uh, Regan over there and say, "Hey, we really appreciate your support, but that song's not done." Yeah, like could you not play it because we're, we're going to finish the song. We'll send it to you right away. And I think something about that, the fact that it was really organic, he like, he discovered it on his own and started playing it. And then we noticed that and we hit him up and said, like, can we give you a better version? I think he just loved the fact that there was no label. There was no promotion department. There was no team. It was literally just two dudes making this music that he found. Um, but that song ended up being number one on their countdown. And we ended up being invited to go play a bunch of shows all over the country because of very busy people. And then uh, internet killed the video star came out and that was, uh, I think even bigger. Yeah. I don't know if it actually was bigger on alt nation. I'm not sure which one got more plays, but I mean, it was, our, that's our, what I mean by fluke. It's like, we, we got really lucky. We just happened at that time. There was no MGMT was the only other like two yes. man. Band, yeah. You yeah. Know? You're right. Yeah, there wasn't like re really there wasn't like I mean like Coldplay like I'm trying to think of like what was big at that time. And it was all bands and the the concept of like the concept of a guy with a computer and a guy with a microphone being on stage, it was like a hip hop only thing. That was not like an alternative or rock thing to do. And it happened just at the right time where a lot of people were getting interested in uh, in DJ culture and like yep. you know Skrillex and that kind of stuff and they were okay with going to see a person with the laptop on stage. Yeah. They didn't need to see a drummer or a bass player, or a whole band. So we just lucked out and we slipped right into this like really perfect little space and time for us. We, um, so Skrillex, obviously Sonny, he, he was yeah. in, he was in, uh, from first to last. So they were signed to my friend's label and he was like, Oh, this dude's like leaving the band. And you know, like we, I didn't think anything of it. And like, you're, you know, maybe a year or two later, he turns out to be Skrillex. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's just amazing. Like, you know, he goes from like being in that punk band to like, you know, doing like the DJ thing and then the laptop thing. And uh, it really worked out for him. It's, it's just amazing. And I remember going to so my band played South by Southwest 2011. Mm -hmm. And that's really when I was there. And the whole time I didn't give a fuck like we were doing like, you know, press or whatever. And anytime someone asked me who I'm here to see, I would always be like, yo, this band called Limousines and Dash Racist. These are the two groups. Oh, you were at you were at South by Southwest when we were. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, cause I want, but everywhere you guys played was sold out. And yeah, uh, that was a, that I that was such a nightmare. We ended up in a hotel room that someone had obviously killed themselves in. Oh wow! It was a trip. There was blood on the ceiling. Like it was disgusting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you brought up you brought up Sunny, and this picture was in my. This is uh that's me and Gio and and Sunny. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. In like in like 2000 I don't know. 
late 2008 or early 2009 um, because Sony uh, was on the last tour that Strata did. Okay. There was Team Sleep. Uh, oh, wow. It's team it's Sleep? That's awesome. Team Sleep awesome. and Sonny and Strata. And that was the last tour that we ever did. And then we kept in touch with Sonny and then he just like blew up, you know, yeah. changed. I remember sitting in, in like backstage with him uh, and listening to the stuff he was working on, the stuff that turned into a basically cre- like created a genre. And just like, I got it. I liked it. I thought it was really cool, but I had no idea it was going to do what it did. You know, no one did. No one it did. Was, yeah. Yeah. He'd, he'd just be, he'd, he would sing his songs and he would, you know, he was like doing a band thing, but after the show, he would just lock himself in the, in the room with his headphones and his MacBook and just sit there and make what became like this huge thing, like a worldwide phenomenon. We just all did. We'd be sitting there backstage, just listening to him fuck around with it. And no one really took it that seriously. I don't think. That's funny. That you, so, so, so you were on tour with him and team sleep. And yeah. then from there you go on to do like the limousines, which is just, it, it's almost like it makes sense. Like after touring with those two bands, you know, like w- what they were doing. Cause even Sean Lopez, actually sean wasn't in team sleep was he i don't even remember no uh no sean sean was in a band called revolution smile oh yeah yeah, back in sacramento um but i I think he might have helped out with some of the team sleep stuff i'm not sure what his involvement is but no but they did they did crosses they did crosses together that's what i was thinking yeah crosses is amazing yeah so um okay so all 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 this stuff is going on and one thing that i always you know you know, not to just continuously tell you how much I love the limousines, <laughs> but <laughs> it's just, as time went on, like, I just like wanted to beat people over the head. Cause to me, I'm like, this band should be the biggest band on the planet. Um, and as time went on, like you would listen to the soundtrack to drive and I'm like, yo, like everyone's sweating this soundtrack. I'm like, I just feel like Bands came after like uh, Time Cop 1983, FM 84, Gunship, The Midnight. All these groups are doing this like synth wave and like yeah. great pop stuff. And I, I just feel like, man, I feel like you guys really laid the groundwork to a lot of that stuff. Well, like, what I what I do, like my my part of the band, I think is. At the at, at, at the same time, it's it's timeless. Right like my style is timeless in that I can't really put it in a certain genre or decade. And I'm not saying that like to toot my own horn. I just mean that I kind of write in these like standard couplets. I focus a lot on, I want like, you know, I'll make a pattern where like the, the third syllable of the line that uh, rhymes with the third syllable of the line after that. And like make these little puzzles of rhymes. And you can kind of place that on top of any style of music. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The thing, the thing that was ahead of its time and the thing that was, I agree, like should have been recognized more was Geo's production. The oh. guy has always, he's always been like a decade ahead of his time. And he still is. If you listen to, if you listen to what, like go on his Spotify on his solo project, Cruels. Cruel. Yeah. And listen to, like listen to one of his songs and and look at the date on it and then fast forward to other songs, you know, a, yeah, a few yeah. years later and they all sound like what he's doing. He always, he has his finger on it, man. He knows what's happening. And yeah, his, his production, it, like, I mean, it's just like the both of you, you know, you guys had the thing, even the live set, you know, with, with the lights and stuff, I thought it was really cool. I caught you guys with the sounds. You oh, guys, cool, yeah. you guys played, Um, it was either the Bowery or like somewhere in Brooklyn. And uh, I'm like, we got to go see them. <laughs> but um, so Get Sharp comes out and, and you guys uh, end up on Danger Bird. And Danger Bird's pretty much like a big deal. At least I thought it was, um, you know, because they had the Silver Sun pickups record. And then from yeah. that, yeah, like all that blew up, like, but also fits in the tantrums. Like that's another great band that I think probably didn't get as big as they should have. Um, I think they're I think they're pretty big. They ended up moving over when, so Danger Bird is a really touchy, I have to be careful what I say about that whole subject, but things didn't go well for us with that label at all. Um, we had a lot of momentum going for us and we felt like we could choose who we wanted to, to continue the momentum with because we, ha- we built this thing by ourselves that was like blasting off with no help. 
And so we were meeting with big, huge labels and little tiny labels and all this kind of shit. And the owner, the head guy at Dangerbird was so cool. We loved him. So we took a little tiny record deal from him because we thought like, okay, he's going to give us the personal attention we want and it's going to be great. And he left the label really quickly and kind of left us in the hands of people who had other priorities. And my analogy was that like, we wanted someone to take the ball and run with it and they, they popped it and went home. You know, it's like, we, we just got fucked. Uh, so get sharp. We did it ourselves. We owned it ourselves. We put it out worldwide. We were making a living off that album, literally. Like we were making good money off that album. And we got signed and suddenly they took it down. It was not on any, it was only in the U S not the rest of the world. And they tried to, you remember how I said like the, the, the radio station people really liked the fact that it was just us. It was genuine. Right. And it was just like two guys making music and there wasn't this big team. Well, they sent in the big team and tried to like reintroduce the singles and re and make them start playing them again. And they're like, you know, we already did this on our own. Why are you trying to sell us this band? Yeah. So, yeah, it's just, I, I, I think you can trace everything I hate about music stuff just to the, the industry. It's absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting that for sure. And, and, and there's nothing more pure, like you said, for, for making music to just make it without like, you know, you, you, you put out these songs and it's, which I think now you could almost, you could really do it now. You know, like you could do it now. You could like make a song and like just put it out tomorrow and uh, do your thing. It's like, do we want to play a show or do we not want to play a show? Or, yeah. you know, it's like so aside from like taking the ball and kicking it into the stratosphere for like the Spotify numbers, uh, you kind of don't need anything except for like, you know, like the hustle behind it and stuff and, and to, right. you know, to connect with people. Um, be, me being a huge horror fan. Um, I gotta say the the concept to uh, to, to um, uh, internet killed the, uh, the the video star, that was pretty awesome. Like who came up with that? Because it's so, it like to me like obviously it's gonna be open to interpretation. I think, but um, I think I kind of like get like my own meaning out of it, especially with what, what do you what do you think it is? Okay, cool. All right, so so <laughs> basically. Uh, obviously you switching over from, from a rock band to, to doing what you're doing. I think it was kind of maybe like slightly like a little tongue in cheek, the very beginning, but at the very end, um, the kids that are kind of putting the, the fake guns to their head to yeah. have the, 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 all the zombies, you know, kind of like, it, it's almost like, like, uh, just them kind of killing off the older people by by like uh just having them maybe try to copy what what the what the young kids are doing and then just like failing at it kind of i like that ah okay so it's not it but that's cool no i'm i i would never i would never actually like if anything's up for interpretation i feel like i did my job already okay cool cool, cool. i wouldn't want to fuck it up by like yeah, yeah. changing your mind about what you think it means all right but the concept of that video was just like drawn out on a piece of paper. I was working a desk job for a little while at Clear Channel. Um, I was a creative director for three radio stations in San Jose. And I loved the job, but I hated that side of the industry too. I was just like, it was interesting for me to get that view of it. But I would just sit at my desk and like storyboard this video out. And it was seemed it seemed ridiculous. Like, oh yeah, we're going to buy a car. We're going to trash it. And we're going to you know put fake cop lights on it and we're gonna like have all these zombies that, i mean everything just happened to work out so perfectly that um like geo and i made the car like we we did everything we painted it put the lights on it we made all the little like you know toilet paper shotguns and all the different like weapons that the kids use the two kids are, are my friends kids who are now like teenagers in their own bands and like yeah yeah, yeah. You know, i think i think i saw that you guys posted that yeah, that okay. the boy is in his in his own band now, and then the cool. girl is just like, you know, living in Hawaii and going to college. So <laughs> it's it's crazy that I mean, I still have little clips of the uh, behind the scenes of that of that video, and they're literally they're little children, and then there's zombies like playing soccer and sitting around playing guitar, waiting for their like it's just humans, but they're dressed up like zombies waiting to do their you know to be called to go on screen. Even and, the high, even zombies in high heels. 
Never seen yeah, those. Before. Of course, Gio brought those. <laughs> He's always been pretty good with that. Yes, I knew. I knew. I knew, I knew I, yeah, I was gonna say I knew someone was good at it. I just didn't know which one of the two. <laughs> hey, I, I was pretty good at it too. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shout out <laughs> was, to that. Yeah. Luckily, uh, I don't have to worry about that anymore. Neither do I, actually. Um, but like I said, the, it's, the lyricism really stood out, and I, I also really want to talk about um, the the video for the future. Um, oh yeah, sure. that is that is just so. Like, man, I post that all the time, and and I would always take the lyrics, and I would post it with the video because I, I just feel like once again it, it's for someone like me that grew up on the Misfits grew up on 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 the smiths like it's such a yeah. dark it's such a dark humor but it's real you know and when you say stuff like there's nothing that you could say that people won't forget someday and i'm like i get that like it's just like, yeah i, I do I, like i'm glad that you bring up the smiths a couple times because it's the smiths and the cure to me lyrically like i i just remember kind of figuring out that if the song sounds really poppy there better be some sickness or some darkness or some some something dark and shitty in the lyric. I'm with right? you. And yep. it should and if it's if it sounds dark and shitty, maybe make it funny. Like the, it shouldn't be so one dimensional where it's just this is a sad song. It sounds sad. The lyrics are sad. Everything's sad. Where it's like the future has this kind of really happy go lucky kind of vibe, but it's about nihilism and and finding you like comfort and solace in the fact that you don't matter. And if you don't matter, your problems don't matter. And like, just chill the fuck out, you know? Yeah. And, and just very dark video. Um, I feel like there was another band at that time. I'm trying to remember who made a video that reminded me of that. And uh, oh, so I think I bet, Night, you, I bet you they didn't have a perfect replica of the, the DeLorean from Back to the Future. No. Though. And that is brilliant too. So hopefully somebody was a big uh, Back to the Future fan. I Dude, I love making videos with the limousines because strata was on a major label and we had so little control over what we were doing uh, like we didn't get to just come up with a video and shoot it how we want yeah right but with limos it was literally like we storyboard that out ourselves i made the the that scene where we crash and we go flying through the through the window yep like i made all that sugar glass i, I looked it up i learned how to make the glass and then we brought a trampoline out in the middle of nowhere and we put couch cushions on the street and like jumped and like did our own stunts, you know, had our friends throw the fake glass in the air. And like, we were lucky enough to have a friend who owned that DeLorean who just let us use it for free. Yeah. Thing ran like a piece of shit, by the way, I couldn't go over like 30 miles an hour. It's, um, you know, it's just one of those videos and, 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 and songs that just, it's just great. Like I, I, you know, it's, I wish I wrote that song. <laughs> it's so good. Thanks. I, I, that's the, that's one of the coolest compliments I've ever heard. Thank you. Cause I, that's what I say. When I hear something great, that's, that's what I say. I wish I wrote that. Do you remember the last thing you felt that about the last song you heard? You're like, damn, I wish I wrote that. The entire, uh, the new strokes album, the whole oh, fucking thing. Yeah. It's great. It's I, brilliant. Like, I don't think, I don't think they've ever put out a bad album um obviously some are, are better than others but like that's that's a band that just continuously makes great records and you know who else? i think that's their i think that's their best album and to that's the kind of thing that makes me feel like it's worth continuing to try writing music even if you're not yeah. going to tour on it that much just because if those guys can still you know 20 some years later can still do that find it in their hearts to like write a great record it's hard to do no, I, 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 I love that. Like anything that inspires you to, to, to continue to do stuff. That's the best. Like when you hear something, you're like, damn, I want to get in there and listen to it. So yeah, um, that, and the, the, the last Arctic monkeys record, oh. that whole concept, like he's, like, he's a lounge singer on the moon yeah. and he writes a whole record about it. It's great. Listen, Alex Turner from the first oh. record to that record, what a brilliant songwriter. And then later on to meet Josh Homme. And I feel like Josh Homme from Queens of the Stone Age really kind of like, like, I feel like he affected his songwriting a little bit too, like later on, you know, like you hear like that. Probably darken, he probably made it a little harder, darken it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so like I got a couple more questions. I don't want, I don't want to keep you hostage, but the band. I'm, I'm actually having a really great time. I like to say, you know, I block out like a 20 minute, you know, interview or something, but I, I like, I like when it's a conversation. It's fun cool man yeah, like like i said i'm i'm very mindful of your time so i, I don't want to mess with it um the band that i remember who made that video was night terrors of 1927 
Do you know them? No, I've never heard of them. Uh, so it's it's the dude from um, uh, Rilo Kylie. And uh, they put out a record and it's just two of them. And, and it kind of reminds me of like the limousines. I'll, I'll send you the link. I think it's really good. But to, to continue with this record, I just want to mention one more song, because since we're still talking about the Smiths, uh, Flask and Booze and Dancing. Uh, f- yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. So to me, you do mention Double Decker Bus in the song. And I'm like, it's got to be. Yeah. Well, of course, man. That's one of my favorite lyrics. Um, yeah. My favorite his, Smith's record too. Yeah, it's it's just because and, and what's what I always think about when I hear that song is he's talking about like just sadly telling his friend like just take me take me home but I don't have a home. Basically saying like I'm crashing at someone's house but I'm not welcome there anymore. And you just imagine like a a sad kind of drunk musician guy that we've all been. Yeah, you know oh, who's yeah. so like you're so full of yourself and 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 your dream which is a requirement to be able to hustle like you need to to be naive enough to believe in yourself and i just imagine the guy like in the, the back you know the guy morrissey i just imagine him in the back seat of that car passing out and just whining about how his friends don't want him sleeping on the couch anymore and it's like you're a fucking you're going to be in the hall of fame, like yeah. the rock and roll hall of fame. And you and you don't know it yet. So just yeah. keep trying. Right. It, it, so especially that song like, just to me has so much romance in it, you know? Oh, it's, it's so good. But so the song, like your song on this in particular, it just really describes kind of like, um, like it's like a perfect nightcap song, you know, like everything that you're saying is so, man, you have a way to, to, to write lyrics that, that, that are really like easy to understand and follow, but like in a very poetic way, which is not easy to do, you know? Well, that's a, that's a Bukowski thing. Um, I, I remember growing up thinking I, I hated poetry. I didn't like poetry, um, but that's because I didn't know what poetry was. And when I learned that poetry is the best words in the best order, that's it. And I like to try to I like to try to say things in songs the way that I would say them to you if we were just sitting down having a drink. Yeah. I'm not going to use any any flowery words that I wouldn't use in conversation. So you try to just say it as simply as you can, um, and and people should understand it. Wow, you nailed it. Um, so I I just I want to just go jump onto to hush, which is the record after. Um, so you guys did like a like a Kickstarter and and it worked out very well, obviously. Um, yeah, so, too well. so for someone who wanted to kind of quit music for a while, like um, when you make Hush, were you thinking like, hey, let's just make another record and see how far we could take this? No, um, we were in, we were totally stoked on the band. We were having such a, a great time. At the at the same time, like. I was in a marriage that was awful. It was. I, I hear it, it all in that record. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was bad almost from the beginning. It just was seven years too long, and um, that album was basically like me writing about that. And in a way, it kind of should have been. A, it maybe should have been a Strata record because it was. It was. It was just that one. It was like the one-dimensional darkness. Like yeah. it wasn't a happy-sounding song with a dark lyric. You know what I mean? Um, hey Shannon, I'm gonna try to get Mama to come get the baby because she needs to eat. Sure, but, you know, I'm only Hush, I'm only using the audio of this, by the way. So, oh, okay. it's no big deal. Um, yeah, Hush was Hush was I think a really great record, and some of our best stuff was in that in that album. But it was like maybe we should have just focused on um, you know the sound that we had just created with Get Sharp. But I love I love Hush. Some of those some of those songs are the best things we've done. But yeah, Hush, man. Like when I listen to Hush, there's a it, it's definitely darker lyrically. Well, I don't want to say lyrically, but like it just I could tell something was going on. Um, but the music was like really kind of like advanced. I thought Geo did like a crazier job on that. You know, like yeah. You know, well, he's he was ahead of his time as usual. I mean, a yeah. lot of people ended up making stuff really similar to that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think like a band like uh, what is that? Uh, Imagine Dragons. Like, I feel like that band <laughs> took a lot of those sounds kind of sort of, you know? Yeah. Uh, but who knows if they ever even heard it? It's just like maybe everyone's kind of on the same wavelength, you know? 
Well, I like that band. I, I think they do a lot of cool stuff. Um, but yeah, like it's, you know, I, I hear similarities and, and, you know, maybe it's just by coincidence. But yeah. um, so Love is a Dog from Hell, like that video, you know, super fun, super cool, very simple. Um, what do you remember about making that video? That was tough because uh, the wife that I was in the bad relationship with that ended around that same month or so. Uh, and then also my current wife were both in that video. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that was gnarly. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, but it was, it's, I honestly, I was in kind of a, like a, a deep depression at the time I was taking lots of pills and I was drinking way too much. Um, yeah. And, and I, I was really feeling hopeless that, that whole, that record has a lot of hopelessness in it. Yeah. It's hard for me. It's just like some of the strata stuff. It's really hard for me to, to listen to some of it. Um, I think the last dance is one of the best lyrically, like one of the best um, end of a relationship songs that I've ever heard. And I'm really happy. And I'm really proud of writing it. Um, but it's dark. And I remember my ex at the time, you know, saying, Oh, this is our song, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there is a, there is a little bit of hope in there, you know. Like, there's, that's there, but is. there's hope. There's not hope in there for that relationship. I, it's hard to explain, but that's not where it was coming from. It was more like I, I hope I'm able to escape this and like okay. have a happy life, which is what happened. And then like, um, I remember one of my longtime friends asking, like, has has she heard your album? Because it sounds like it's like a a breakup note, you know, the whole thing. And, and it really was. So in a way, like that ended up helping me find happiness and like, you know, surviving, literally surviving it. The whole thing. It really is like like lyrically, except for um, uh, the song Strangers, which I think is yeah. super cool because it's relatable. Like, I feel like, you know, it's like, you. Oh, like, everyone, everyone does that. You're right? taking a shit you're on Instagram. <laughs> you're zooming in on all the, the right parts of the picture. Like that. Yeah. That's it, a thing. It, it almost, it's, it's one of those like incognito songs where you break down the lyrics and like, it's like when you hear the song Lily by smashing pumpkins, you're just like, yep. wait a minute. You're like, why is he in, in a tree? Cause you're singing along to this melody. And then when you break it down, you're like, Oh yeah. It's, it's really creepy. I actually, one of the because we play like one show a year we play a christmas show yes and, I see, yeah. um it's always really fun but i remember the, all the me too stuff was really cracking off and it got me thinking like how have i you know like how have i been a shithead in yeah. the past and, and what what awful like looking back at it like who would i make amends to and who should i apologize to for my behavior and kind of like really thinking about that stuff and there's lots of them, you know, like having toured since 2003, like I took advantage of a lot of people in my situation. They, and pe honestly, people took advantage of me too. Like, I think every touring musician can relate to feeling like a trophy of the local collector. You know, there's, there's a, a girl in each town who, you know, gets what she wants out of every band that comes to town and you're you're being taken advantage of the same way she is so just getting really dark and, and icky about all that stuff um I, and, I, and, and i and i, I felt like it. i had to apologize for the lyrics of stranger in a way not apologize but like we we're about to play the song and i said to the audience like this is a very rapey song i'm sorry you know <laughs> Cause it's, you're literally like, you're falling in love with someone on the internet and then you stalk them through like a dark parking lot. And it almost implies, I've never thought about rape, but it almost implies it. It sounds like that's what it's saying. And I think it's gross. I mean, I love the song. I think it's a great song, but the interpretations of it could go so many different ways. You, uh, you know? know? Yeah. You, you, you listen to like older lyrics and like, I, I do the same. And as you oh, get John Lennon wrote, John Lennon wrote some nasty shit. Like, <laughs> yeah like about how like if you if you don't uh if i see you with another guy i'm gonna kill you basically is what john lennon was right about yes That's yeah it's you know it's it, i you know i i've done the same thing and you do look back and stuff and uh 
you know, you, but I think it's part of like growth. Like you kind of, you're like, man, I, I hope I didn't really do that. Or I hope no one felt that way towards me. Uh, and as long as I think you have that, that, that ability to make amends or, or even just that the wherewithal or self-awareness to be like, damn, I hope that's not me. Like, I, I just feel like that speaks volumes, you know? If you survive your time in the music business with your conscious, your, your conscience intact, then you lucked out. Cause it's a, it's, it's all the things that people say, you know, like the cliches, the sex, drugs, rock and roll. It really is that if that's what you want. Sure. Um, so you can get really gross. Like you can be a very, you can go through some really nasty stuff and yeah. get stuck yeah. in some shit. And, and, you know, it's, it's, you know, for sure. It's, it's, it's what we all grow up looking at and, you know, a lot of those bands, you know, you, they get celebrated shit. I mean, we all saw the dirt on Netflix. So <laughs> yeah. Molly, or like our, just hearing the Led Zeppelin legends and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, like yeah. It all comes with the territory. And what's weird about the, the groupie thing is, you're when you do that especially if you're new to it you realize that one of the biggest problems with your performance is not your performance in 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 bed but your performance on stage one of the big problems with it is your lack of confidence you know you don't need you don't need skill as much as you need confidence you need to belong in that space and to me stage presence is not how high you can jump it's do you belong in that like two square feet of your space like do you belong there yeah and if you do belong there everyone will know it they'll all feel it and they'll agree with you but if you feel like you don't belong there then they'll see that too and i feel like when you're on tour you're some random state you've never been in you go home with someone you don't know and you have like crazy druggy sex with them and then you wake up the next morning and you play a show you feel like you belong on stage because that, that's what you've been fed your whole life about what it means to be yeah a rock and roll guy and and you just become a better performer when you fuck girls on the road it's yeah. totally true it, it doesn't it's not a thing that just continually like it, the return on investment starts to go down a little bit as you do it but that first couple really gives you a boost yeah it's 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 a confidence thing and and you gotta yeah. be confident on stage so that brings me to like the live show like just out of curiosity, so from 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 going to your band to then the limousines, like, what was like that those first few live shows where it's just going to be like you and Geo? Uh, I think you had a drummer, but probably not in the very beginning, right? So how how was that adjusting to the the very first show we ever played um, was at the Great American Music Hall in San Francisco, super legendary place. My dog is something my leg. Nice. <laughs> um, he heard he heard the stories. He heard the story and he's like, I want confidence. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it was at Great American Music Hall and it was, we had a drummer, a bass player, an extra singer and a guy just like kind of playing tertiary shit and then me and Gio. So it was a big setup and we were opening for Dredge. It was amazing. It was fun. But we had like very few songs and we didn't have, kind of didn't have our shit together. The next thing we did was just the two of us at a library. It was like a hardcore show, but we just kind of snuck in there yeah. um, and yeah. kind of took it over. It was very dashboard was kind professional. Of, yeah, it was crowded. It was crazy. And we were like, you know, this weird little quirky thing instead of being like a rock band. That went off really well. And then um, for a while, it really was just the two of us. It was like Geo with the computer, one keyboard and like an MPC. So he would, you know, play the drums and most of the other stuff would just be on tracks. And we focused on me running around with a wireless mic and uh, it was great. I had a whole stage to myself for the first time in my life just to run around and do whatever I want. Um, but eventually we needed more. Like we needed, I have this amazing drummer friend named Kerry who, who plays with us all the time. He played in South by Southwest shows. I think okay. that was the one that you saw. I, it was so um, loud. I couldn't make it in. Oh, maybe you heard it yeah. but um yeah carrie is an incredible drummer because he's able to adapt to the, the tracks that are already there you know um and kind of add to it without without yeah. mucking it which is not easy to do it's really hard yeah. um dino dino from dredge was also one of our drummers for a little bit he's amazing um and then harag my bass player from strata has also played bass with limos and then eddie who was the 
tech for the sounds. We met him on the sounds tour. Uh, he played bass for us most of the time. He played bass for us on a whole tour. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So it, it's, everyone kind of knows that like the band is me and Gio and sometimes on stage there's, uh, you know, our friends join us. Um, but like, Kerry has kind of cemented his spot as like, he's our drummer. Yeah. You know? So, um, yeah, I mean, just finishing up here, I, I just want to say, I, I always thought like the, the peak of, uh, of, uh, being, you know, of fame musically is to either do hot ones or be interviewed by Nardwar. But there's a third one that I totally forgot about, uh, that they had very busy people on rock band. Did you know that? Yeah. And the Sims too. I sang, a, I sang a version of it for the Sims. Okay. Yeah, that, to me, that was, that was like making it like hearing myself singing in Simlish on the, on the game. But yeah, I saw that the, it's, it's funny. Cause I don't even know how that happened, but I, but I remember like just on a fluke, like I'm going to see if any of my songs are on rock band and, and very busy people was, it was a trip. But if you go to the rock and roll hall of fame, you go to the, uh, the MTV exhibit. Okay. It's a permanent exhibit. And they talk about how the very first video they played was the Boggles uh, oh, yeah, video yeah, yeah, killed yeah. a radio star. And on it's actually on the wall, like on the plaque, it mentions the limousines, uh, Internet Killed the Video Stars, a sequel, basically like a bookend. Yes. So we are literally a footnote in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And to me, that was like the cherry on top of everything, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what I love. You know what it is? It's like an accidental thing. Like, I mean, just a title at that. And in and, and my head, I'm thinking like, that's brilliant. And like, how has no one thought of this? And then when you make the song and you listen to the lyrics, like they just, it's so true. It's like, you know, like, I listen, I'm a huge hip hop fan. That's why I like, I don't even listen to the music that I play, to be honest with you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just like because I, I need to get inspired lyrically. Um, and like it, when you hear it's like kids are disco dancing, the you know, the tie to rock and roll. And it just I don't know, man, it was just so such a refreshing thing to hear. And uh, I love it. Um, but uh, another it, thing I wanted to mention it was originally uh, it was originally the kids all just go dancing. Oh, just go dancing. The, the kids all just go dancing. They're tired of rock and roll. And to me, it made more sense, but we switched it to disco because that's kind of how it felt like uh, rock and roll and disco have had this like kind of heated history of, of uh, not a rivalry, but you know, like yeah. when disco was big people, there was the one side that just really hated it and one side that loved it. So I thought it was, it was, it was, it brought up more imagery to think about like hating disco in favor of rock and roll and vice versa. Yeah, I mean, I was going to go with Just Go, but once you mentioned that, I'm like, that makes sense. And I remember, so did you watch the the, the new Bee Gees documentary on HBO? I haven't, but you're like the 10th person who told me I should, so oh, I need to. It's, I'm not even like the biggest Bee Gees fan, but it's like brilliant. It's a brilliant documentary, and it shows their whole career from like the very like Beatles-esque music into like uh, um, the disco stuff and which of yeah. course which they got panned for um, uh, you know by like some people you know they were like destroying their records but I mean they were the hugest band and by the end it's a story about the brothers and it's I, it's it's so goddamn well made I love it I love any I love that kind of stuff because you know from being in bands that there's always there's always so much more that goes into it like the process is never just like, oh, well, who comes up with the lyrics and the music? It's, it's so much like who experienced this thing? Well, if you're writing well, yeah. I think if you're writing well, you have to live well first to write about that. And those are where the, that's where the stories are. You know, if you get a band together and sit around a fire with some beer and like talk about the old days, that's that's what being in a band is about, is making memories with your friends, like war comrades, you know, like you've been through something together and it's one of those things. Like if, if you're in a band and you've gone on tour with another band, you're going to be friends with those guys you meet for the rest of your life. Like yeah. some of my best friends are people that I met on tour in 2003 and we, we see each other like once every year or so, but we're still connected, you know? Yeah. Connected through music is amazing. Like everyone that I still, I mean, I, I have the people that I grew up with, but like, you know, playing in bands out here, uh, Long Island, New York, um, you know, you just make these friends through art, you know, it's like uh, music, movies, everything that people do out here, which yeah. I love, but um, wh- what are Did some you say like- your friends with the Taking Back Sundays guy? Yeah. Taking Back Sunday guy? 
I am. Yeah, my wife, my wife is a insane oh. Adam fan. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, but... So we were, we were, we were playing in somewhere and, and she saw him backstage uh, at a festival and she's like, oh my God, I need to get a picture with him. Okay. And I'm like, don't fuck, please don't do that. Don't yeah, do yeah, that, yeah. please. <laughs> like we're, we're back here with artist passes. You can't go taking pictures. And he was so, he was so cool. And the picture oh. is so embarrassing of, of her because she's just freaking out. But she, uh, so all those guys, like the, all four of them are like super, like they're just so damn nice and normal and humble and like really, yeah, they seem like they would be. Yeah. They're like just totally down to earth. Actually their drummer, we're making a record in the fall and he's going to play drums for us on that record, man. So shout out to Mark nice. for, for helping us out. <laughs> um, but yeah, so wrapping up here, let me see. Uh, I, uh, oh, the, the song Parachute. Right. So, OK, so you do two songs, actually stumble back to you, which is a banger, really good. And, and I get like lyrically where you were. I at least I think I feel like I know where you were and I've been there, too. You know, um, is there anything that you want to talk about with stumble back to you? Um, it's hard for me to like I have to I mean, I haven't heard that song since we put it out because we never play it. OK, it's, it's definitely not one of the songs in our like rotation um what what made you do it because like it was at so it was like a what like three years after um it was just a song that popped up right it was just a thing you know it was like kind of a b-side it's a song okay. that we we kind of just had laying around and there was just something about the like if to me it reminds me of like where the wild things are okay you know like or or lord of the flies kind of like kids on an island that's that's what that song feels like to me um parachute was kind of a fun experience because Gio and I, he moved to LA. I live, I live 400 miles north of him okay. and we hardly ever see each other. And so uh, I had a, a, a cabin, a family um, getaway. And so after the family left, I stayed behind and had Gio come over and we kind of, cause snow everywhere, totally isolated. And we could just work together because we hadn't gotten an opportunity to do that in a long time. And uh, I have kind of a long, storied history of you know uh, prescription drug abuse problems and also like having them help me quite a bit so writing those lyrics was all about just like the, the myriad of, of of pills and what they can do for you uh, and also the sadness of knowing that like you're gonna need them in a way like you're gonna you're gonna need to be bailed out at some point yeah that that song like when i heard it but to me like when i heard that song in particular like i said it it, it was like going back to get sharp like I heard it and I was like, yo, this is like, I was waiting for the whole record. I was like, oh, maybe they dropped a the single. They're going to put the whole record. Oh, back. I wish, man. <laughs> I wish we, I wish we could get it together. It's my fault. Cause Gio is one of those artists I, I told you about in the beginning where the guy who gets up in the morning and makes music. Yeah. Yeah. Every fucking day he makes something great. And I just wait around for a thought to float by, you know? And so I'm more of a fisherman while he's more of like a construction worker. Right. Yeah um <laughs> that's good <laughs> so I'm, I, I do a lot of sitting on my ass and drinking and waiting for good ideas to come by so we locked ourselves in that cabin and decided to like just don't leave there without one song and we we wrote another one called sorry that is incredible like it's just not done like i always have that i love writing the first verse i love writing the first chorus and second verse is really hard to get to and no, like, me I, too i get and i lose interest because to me like Oh, you're if, so the, right. if the second if the second verse isn't pushing the song forward it doesn't make sense to me and if the chorus isn't something that you need to say again right if it's an unmem if it's not memorable and it doesn't deserve to be repeated then it's not a fucking chorus so i have this huge problem of like okay so now that i said all these things the first chorus makes those that verse make sense but now i have to come up with a second verse that does the same thing in a different way and it becomes sometimes a daunting puzzle that can take me like years to figure out and then you come to the bridge and like now you have to say something completely different and literally use it as a bridge to take you from one place to another and then you give them the relief of that chorus coming back again 
because they miss it now because they've been in this other place that you brought them to with the bridge. Yeah. So that's what's known as overthinking and crippling yourself. It's so true. Like you're so right. Like I, you're, when you write that first verse in that first chorus, you're like, cool. It sounds cool. But if I don't go to that set, if I don't write it right away, it, it, I come back to it in a month. I'm like, I don't even know what I was trying to do. Like I don't, it's at that point, like I, I don't even know. And, and what I always hated, I didn't hate, because I do love bands like Alkaline Trio that always repeat the second verse, you know, the first verse and the second. Yes, a little bit and, louder and a little bit worse. Well, I mean, they just like, you know, they throw in like an extra word and shit. Um, yeah. I'm like, I, I'm not secure enough to do that. I'm like, I need to. I need to. Verse. I need to continue telling a story. That's how I feel. Like it has to. It has to take the song to another place after. Yeah. And but the thing is, like, you're running on this crazy adrenaline of like, oh my god, I'm about to figure this out. This like, it's coming to me, and then. And then it becomes now I'm obligated. Now I now there's this obligation that I have to finish this song. Like now that this has become a song, right? Because there's a verse and a chorus, and that's where I just fall apart. And there's probably a hundred songs between the two bands and, and my solo stuff that are in that situation where there's a verse and a chorus, and they're just kind of lingering. And you have a solo record that came out, but then it. Um you said you took it down, but it's coming back out on a, on a label. Um, I have a friend who has a label who wants to put it out. So I took it down, um, out of respect got for it, that. Got it. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So if, you know, if, if they do that, if they end up putting it out, that's great. If not, um, I feel like it's a really strange record. So it's like, it's not gonna, it's not like it's going to change my life. It's out there. It's not going to make any money or anything. So, and I'm not really in the business of like, praying for applause so if if it doesn't come out and no one ever hears it it's not going to matter to me i don't care okay like i love it i think it's great if someone wants to hear it i'll email it to them but like i don't really want to be out there promoting it it's not really like you know what i want to get um, yeah, I mean, listen, you get emailed to me. I'd love to listen to it, but uh, <laughs> it's it's cool. It's different. It's like a lot of it's just very like let the let the mistakes be there. Um, let the fact that it's not all fully thought out and structured, let it all just be, you know? And so it's a, it's a strange album, but it, it has a feeling like my, my grandma, my last grandparent was dying at the time I wrote about her. Um, I was questioning just everything about like what I wanted to be with you know, who I want to be and just how my life was going to be. So. Grandparents yeah. are a big deal, man. Um, I grew up, like with a great grandmother, uh, two grandmothers, and my mom. <laughs> so those four women for sure. A lot of respect for women there. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Those four definitely probably you know babied me a little too much and shit. But uh, so two last questions. Um, so would you say if everything goes well, you guys are going to do your Christmas show in December, or that's not even a thing? If you ask me that you know, six months ago, I would have said, no way. I, it's, I feel like I, I got in really good shape. Remember I told you about being, I didn't want to be judged. I didn't want to be fat on stage. I didn't want right. to be you're, you're all the shit. climbing rocks, man. Come so on. I got in like the best shape of my life last year and played, you know, great Christmas show with the limousines, best one we've ever done. And then played three of the best shows Stratus ever played. Okay. And then I started thinking, you know what, if I never step on stage again, that'd be awesome. Cause I know that the last ones were, were great. So it's kind of to choose your own adventure and just like be, to be able to stay, like I placed the microphone on the stage and walked away rather than like, I got tired of begging people to come to my 50th birthday party show and gotcha. yeah, gave yeah, up yeah. music. Yeah, yeah. So like choosing how, if it's, if it's going to be a slow beat down or like a decision and so, yeah, if you asked me that like six months ago, I would have said no fucking way. Like, I'm not getting on stage again. But the limo show is like a San Jose tradition now for so many people. It's it seems it's, like it. It seems it from like the, the footage and stuff. I'm like, this is it's wild. wild. It's, it's so much fun. It's so different every year. And um, it's fun to try to come up with like, how do you you know, we had we had this crazy setup last year where like there was a fireplace with like a fire in it but it was a big, huge TV inside a fireplace that we built. And then there was like these windows where we would 
there's little skits happening when I would go do a costume change. There'd be like a skit of me like peeking in the window and then I'd like blow fog and draw a dick on the window and sneak away. And then like, I'm, you know, jerking off in the window and like <laughs> all this kind of crazy shit. I've popped out of a Christmas present, like with a dildo hanging out of my pants. Like I've done a lot of weird things. And now that I have a kid, I'm kind of like, do I still want to do, do I want to be that guy still like yeah, popping yeah. out of a, a box and the dick hanging out <laughs> or like end up in nothing but a tutu, you know, yeah. at the end uh, of the yeah, show. Yeah, I, I saw that. It was very like uh, Cheech Marin and uh, uh, up in smoke. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, so there's a lot of question marks in there, but. So maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Let's see. Um, I'll fly out, man. It'll be cool. Um, and the last. Honestly, if you, if you ever, if you do, I would love it. I, Cause I do, I, I, I don't do a whole lot of like interview stuff, but I love when I meet somebody through it. Um, I'll, like I'll sing on one of your songs if you want me to. I mean, it, you seem like a nice guy. Man, I feel, you know, like, like I said, when, when you do a podcast, like we've been doing it for a while, it's just, just like the last year I've kind of started taking it serious. And, you know, we've had on like some really cool people and I, but it's always like, I feel like you're bothering people. Cause it's like, Oh, like, can you talk to me? And like, well, it's, it's cause it's fun. I'm not doing this podcast with you because you're Joe Rogan and it's yeah. like, it's going to be exposure for my career. Like, nah, yeah, <laughs> I don't, and even if it was, even if you had like a fucking million listeners, like yeah. I'm not, I, I think that I'm past that stage of like doing anything just to try to like make it. Yeah. Cause yeah. I already, I feel like I already made it. I, I, I came out a happier person than I was when I went in and I got to live a whole bunch of really great experiences. So I made it. And I know people who are way more successful in the business than I ever was. And they still don't feel like they made it. And that's their problem. Yeah, for sure. I, I completely get that. And, and for me personally, like I said, I'm just a, a fan and I respect the stuff that you created. So you took time. That's, to talk that's to why me. it's yeah. You know, it's like, and, like and, genuinely respect. And the last three Strata songs are the three best songs I think you guys have ever done. No, um, thanks. Welcome to the West Coast. Uh, Around the Bend is a fucking like, I mean, that's that's some shit right there. But, that was eerie. That was eerie because that song was written way before. It was written like a month before the pandemic hit. And it was all about how like something really bad is going to happen soon. I don't oh, know what it is. Oh, my God. I didn't so know it just that. ended up being like this crazy coincidence that the world fell apart right when I wrote about that. Yeah. So that's fucking weird. I did, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the, the third song, which I think is actually the best of the three, which is rat rats and snakes. That's my favorite too. And I like to say, I don't care about success and all that kind of stuff, but it really did kind of, it surprised me when that song like didn't really do anything, you know, like it didn't, I had it maybe how the video maybe has like a thousand plays or something. And I was like, kind of tripped out and sad because i really like it i think it's great okay yeah i didn't even know that there was a video so i'm gonna watch it but like, yeah it's just a lyric it's a lyric video but that's the thing we don't have any like team to promote anything it's just kind of if it's if people find it it's there you know that's that's what we're all doing man it's like you know we yeah for sure you you just get it out there and it's like i i do everything for like the band the podcast but i enjoy it because it's I like, I like talking about music and movies, you know, so that's why yeah. I do it. And the, yeah, when that, and that, in the, the part of that song where like the solo kicks in and the, the downbeat kicks in, I'm like, holy shit. So good on uh, Rats and Snakes. It's good to get some appreciation from like, like hardcore fans too, like, yeah. like heavy music people, because I feel like we've always kind of straddled that like ballad rock versus like metal thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some, but you, so these songs in particular, like they're a little bit different. Like the production, maybe the production on, on those songs just sound like, um, I don't know, they sound really good, man. These, those are like the three, like those three songs are really, really good Strata songs. Um, I think Ryan, Ryan, our guitar player, who kind of like wrote most of the music and recorded everything, he's he'd like to hear that. So, shout out to Ryan. Yeah, good job, Ryan. Um, and last question, man, I know you're a big Radiohead fan, uh, but I know that you love OK Computer. Um, so I'm more of a Ben's guy, <laughs> but oh, wow. like, yeah, but, but here's the thing. I love the, I love the first four albums. I just, I was just wondering if you ventured off to the later records because they're one of those bands that it's like, man, these first four records 
I give them up to kid a are so good, but I feel yeah. like I hear King of limbs and I'm like, I just don't even get it. But like, God damn, like you hear the first record has so many deep cuts, like thinking about you. I can't then the Benz has just, when I first heard just, I'm like, this shit is so good. And then Mark Ronson did a great cover of that, by the way. But right, yeah. um, and OK Computer, like those first four records, man. I, I but do you venture off after that? I think. I well, I definitely. I love. I love everything they've done. And, um, one of our friends, my tour, old tour manager, is their tour manager now. Oh wow! Cool. So we get to, we get good seats when they come to town. It's pretty awesome, and I get the feeling that, I get the feeling that they write music now for the live show more than for the record because that's i think that that's their their experience of the band is not the albums they don't go home and listen to the albums so they want to write music that's fun to play so it's when you listen to something like king of limbs you're kind of like okay I, yeah, as a record this experience is not traditional radio head like brilliance right but in a way it is because it's, it's written for for that live version um but I'll go to bat for OK Computer anytime because it's as an album, as a full record, it's it's like one of the last great classic like rock albums, I think. I, it's you, from start you, to finish. It has it just brings you on this crazy adventure. It gets like if you listen to Climbing Up the Walls, it's like one of my favorite Radiohead songs. There's this crazy scream that Tom York does. And I don't know, or maybe it's not, it sounds like it's him but almost like he's screaming into the pickups on his guitar and it's gnarly as fuck. It's, it's buried in the mix, but it's so like angsty and just like, oh, I love it. And it, it takes the tension of that song and kind of like releases it in the background. And that to me, it's just so complex that I don't know. I could listen to that song every day and not yeah. get sick of it. I mean, the whole record, like no surprises, like, like everything from that record for sure. Yeah. Um, but I, I, like I said, the, those first four records, but I know you were, no, I get, I get you with Pablo honey and the bends and all their yeah. stuff. It's all, it's, it's all brilliant, but like, okay. Computer came out when I was in my first band and playing my first shows and like inspired me in a way that no other piece of art ever could again. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like, that's huge. It's just something so so special to me. Yeah. Cool. Yo, um, thank you for doing this. That's uh, fun, man. Thank you for just hanging out with me. You know, obviously, like I said, I'm just some some guy from Long Island, and uh, you took time to to basically do the show. I'm going to put it out tomorrow. Uh, hey, I, I I I I very rarely even think of myself as a creative person or a musician anymore. So, like, talking with someone about that and and receiving the respect from you is, is, uh, this is awesome. Super very props. And, and, and I, I, I had to compete with the, the song, the song fact podcast that you did like last year, that dude was uh, good. Yeah. Oh yeah. He was, that was incredible. Like, that's the thing I love. I love talking to somebody who, you know, isn't just going to like Google a couple song titles and then throw them at me and ask like, what was the inspiration for that? You know, yeah. like, or where did you come up with the band name? Like that kind of typical stuff. Damn, that was my first question. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't talk to you for more than 10 minutes if there's that kind of thing, you know? <laughs> no, for sure. And I completely get it because at this point, it's like, what's the point? But it's like, you know, super genuine fans. So thank you for doing it. Uh, thank you for making the time. And uh, man, I look forward to listening to everything that you got coming up. I appreciate it. And if you need some backing vocals, you hit me up. Yo, don't play with me because, you know. I'm serious. Whatever you like, I'm down. I got well, I got three EPs coming out this year, so I'm, I'm going to hit you up. Stay in touch. We'll, we'll work it out. All right, Eric. Cool, Later, man. man. Bye. Thanks.
dark satellite.